cannot be the creation of any exigency or fancy. It is a gift of God which only the Lord can give. Before God rejected Saul for his disobedience, in not destroying the God, the good of the Amalekites in first Samuel 15 from the 1 to 35, Saul had already been rejected for taking up the priestly office that did not belong to him. As the people waited for Samuel to come to perform the priestly function of offering sacrifice before embarking on a war, Samuel was not forthcoming. Then Saul ran out of patience and went to offer the sacrifice himself. For that taking a priestly office that did not belong to him, Saul's kingdom was taken away from him. We cannot invent the ministry that does not belong to us. It can only be received as a gift. For this reason too, anyone entrusted with the gift of the priestly ministry must recognize the weight of this responsibility. If one who has not been entrusted with this responsibility attempts to undertake it, faces great consequences, graver consequences await the one who has received the gift but it manages it. This is why, as a matter of fact, I would like to tell our soon to be ordained priests and others who have accepted the priestly ministry that the only way to give a good account of the gift you have received as ordination is to see your priestly ministry as a specific path to holiness of life. Holiness speaks to our total dedication to God through the priestly promises of poverty, obedience, and chastity. If you are not living your priesthood with a clear goal of holiness of life, then you have come to the Lord's vineyard to occupy space without value. Let us now allow the readings of this part to help us see how we can leave our priestly ministry with the goal of holiness of life. In the first reading from the book of Isaiah, Jesus speaks about how the Spirit of the Lord has anointed him. In asking his disciples to carry off his ministry, he told them that as the Father has sent him, so he sent them. In other words, he extends the anointing of the Father to them. Therefore, one who becomes a priest is configured to Christ in a particular way. He is not Christian, but Christ himself is the Christian. Hence, when the priest pronounces the word of consecration and mass, this is my body, this is my blood, or when he absorbs the sinner by saying, I absorb you, he does not do this as a representative of Christ, but it is Christ himself who does that in him. The capacity of the human person to allow Christ to act in him in this way is made possible by one Catholic doctrine referred to as a character, that is, an indelible man that has been inscribed in the soul of the person which cannot be effaced or removed. This capacity, my dear friends, infinitely, infinitely goes beyond the personal talents or qualities of the person who has received this accommodation. That is why not even his simpleness can prevent his power from being effective. But unfortunately, will it be for the man who does not allow himself to be nourished by what he is used to make others share from. This infinite greatness of the gift of princely ordination in comparison to the human capacity of the ordained priest based on 
Paul to say in the second reading that we have the treasure, a jar of clay, to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. That is why the letter to the Hebrews says that no one takes this honor upon himself because he is called by God. It is for this reason, my dear friends, that the Paul continues in the second reading that we are servants of Jesus Christ's sake. Let us hear him clearly. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. The force of the enemy and admonition, admonition of the word that we do not Bid the priest to preach in and out of season. Be detached from material things and live the liberty and the joyful affirmation. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I especially invite you to preach for our two to be ordained priests. We are often regularly faced with the feelings of grace, but when that happens, do not forget the great gift of the priesthood which surpasses any human weakness and turn our holy family 